Hello, my name is Ashreya Samakandan. I'm a rising junior at Olentangy Liberty High School in Columbus, Ohio. I plan to become a dermatologist in the future. Also, I have been playing chess competitively since the age of five and am currently ranked among the top 15 best female chess players in Ohio. I first sparked interest in the reproductive health care accessibility for women in the United States during an inspiring and powerful discussion about women's health in my reign as Miss Teen International USA 2022. Highlighting women globally through my reign, I also conducted research followed by a 2200 word research paper on limited reproductive health care access for women, especially with low incomes. The ability to get and pay for reproductive health services like contraception, family planning, prenatal care, and abortion is referred to as reproductive health care access. Sadly, numerous social and cultural stigmas, a lack of funding, and certain government policies prevent many women from utilizing these services. In fact, according to Gretchen Bullshit, the Vice President of National Women's Law Center, Roughly one in four women reported in 2017 that they delayed or went without care due to costs, which ultimately leads to the question, how do the limitations of reproductive health care access affect women with low incomes? Limited access to reproductive health care evidently plays a large role in the negative health effects in women. According to Giolano Mariani, a translational research professor at the University of Italy, about 70% of cervical cancers worldwide are caused by the human papilloma virus and untreated syphilis still causes over 200,000 deaths every year. Poor nutrition in the younger age groups and during pregnancy leads to a decrease in bone mineral density and osteoporosis in older age. Osteoporosis affects an estimated 200 million women worldwide, with approximately one in three women older than 50 years old experiencing an osteoporotic fracture. Social and cultural stigmas are also one of the biggest barriers in accessing reproductive health care. Women's reproductive health is viewed as a private matter in some cultures, making it difficult for them to openly discuss their health care requirements in public. Not only does this make it harder for women to get health care, but it also helps spread false information. But through a continuous action and surveillance cycle called the MPDSR, reducing future preventable maternal mortality will be more effective. These global endeavors are only the beginning. They laid the groundwork for local action, which is necessary to, to, to truly address discrimination and stigma in reproductive health care. In the ever so popular image, migrant mother resembling the people during the Great Depression era, struggling in poverty and hopelessness of a no brighter future. This correlates with the issue of women being targeted to having lower incomes than men, as well as more likely to live in poverty than men. Women, in, women continue to be concentrated in jobs with low pay and authority levels, placing limits on their income, status, and power, while men continue to dominate the top positions of the firm, ensuring higher payment and better job security. Over the last decade, the Title X Family Planning Program, the nation's only dedicated source of funding for family planning, has endured nearly stagnant funding, while the demand for services has grown. The plans are in conflict with what the administration wants to change, which would make it harder for low-income people to get high-quality health care by giving money to non-essential health care organizations. To combat this issue, one of the earliest programs in the 1970s addressed women's practical needs called the WID approach, an approach that focused on the role of women in economic and social development. Although the WID approach has struggled to achieve its objectives due to frequent underfunding and lack of institutional support from the governments and international organizations. In the Philippines, a law known as the Reproductive Health Bill ensures that all Filipinos have access to contra contraception, fertility control, sexual education, birth control, and maternal care. Additionally, the RH Bill aims to guarantee universal access to information regarding maternal care and birth, birth control. As a result, a similar RH bill out to be passed in the United States because it encourages progress by providing women with needed health care. The reproductive health bill has not yet been passed for a variety of reasons. However, the majority of people believe that the benefits of putting the reproductive health bill into action will outweigh the drawbacks. Although many policies and plans are in place, according to the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists, Unintended pregnancy abortion rates are higher in the United States than in most other developed countries, and low-income women, low women have disproportionately high rates. 
Therefore, a multi-phase strategy that incorporates comprehensive education, increased funding, and policy modifications to ensure that women have access to the necessary healthcare services is key to address these barriers. In the Dark Side of Resilience from Harvard Business Review by Tomas Chamorro Premuzik and Derek Lust, in other words, choosing resilient leaders is not enough. They must also have integrity and care more about the welfare of their teams and their own than their own personal success. Electing the right leaders who play a fundamental part in essential government decisions will not only help the world's economy grow, but the human resource as a whole will also get better. Only then will women be able to take control of their reproductive health and leave, live their lives fully and freely. Thank you. Here are the credits. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Ashwarya at yahoo.com um, written below right here. And thank you for watching.